High ISO does not cause high noise. I'm gonna do a series of tests and prove that to you. And then I'm gonna show you a new technique for using ISO like a speedometer, and that's gonna do more for your image quality than upgrading to full frame or even medium format. Let's take two pictures with different ISOs so we can see exactly how ISO impacts the image. The high ISO image is brighter, so we know high ISO causes bright images. Let's adjust the brightness of the images in post. Some of the highlights have been clipped, so we know high ISO images can clip the highlights even in a RAW file. But does it show more noise? Looking closely, the high ISO image definitely does not show more noise. In this example, high ISO has less noise because the camera has a dual gain sensor. If high ISO isn't causing the noise, then what is? Let's repeat that same test, but this time we'll keep aperture and ISO the same and adjust the shutter speed. The obvious conclusion, short shutter speeds cause dark images, long shutter speeds cause brighter images, but what about noise? Let's adjust the brightness of the images to be the same. Looking closely at the noise, the image with the short shutter speed has far more noise. We can conclude that short shutter speeds cause high noise, not high ISOs. Let's try repeating that test by varying only the aperture. Obviously, again, there's a change in brightness. Equalizing the exposure, we see that high f-stop numbers also increase noise, just like short shutter speeds did. So we know high ISO doesn't cause noise, but high f-stop numbers do, and fast shutter speeds do. What about the forgotten fourth corner of the exposure triangle, light? Let's drag in a light and see if that makes a difference. That's a lot of light. Comparing the high light and low light pictures, the low light picture clearly has more noise, even though all the camera settings are the same. High ISOs don't cause high noise, but short shutter speeds, high f-stop numbers, and low light all cause high noise. What do those three things have in common? Well, they're all reducing the amount of light that reaches your camera's sensor. What if this whole time it was actually about light and we'd been blaming this perfectly harmless ISO? Knowing this can give you a really useful tool. Instead of thinking about ISO as something that causes noise, think of it like a speedometer. You don't blame the speedometer when you get pulled over for speeding, right? No, it's the accelerator that causes your car to go fast. The speedometer just tells you how fast you're going. Auto ISO can give you an indicator of whether you're giving your sensor enough light. If it's at anything except your camera's base ISO, usually ISO 100, then you maybe need to look at your other camera settings and see if there's some way you can give your sensor more light. If this technique lets you lower your auto ISO speedometer by just one stop, you've doubled the amount of light getting to your camera. You've made as big of an image quality improvement as upgrading from APS-C to full frame. Lower your ISO by another stop, and you've matched the noise and dynamic range of a medium format camera at your original settings. So if you check your auto ISO speedometer and you're above your base ISO, what can you do to give your sensor more light? Can you use a slower shutter speed, perhaps? Can you use a lower f-stop number? Could you switch to maybe a prime lens that's a little bit faster? Could you use image stacking? Could you turn up the lights or add a flash or move into the light? There are so many different options for increasing light and decreasing noise, and none of them are changing your ISO. I will say back in the film days, if you were shooting in low light, you might load your camera up with ISO 3200 film, and you wouldn't be able to change it until you used up that whole roll of film. So if you went shooting in broad daylight the next day, yeah, even in broad daylight with lots of light, you would end up with grainy, noisy pictures because you were forced to use that high ISO by your film. That ISO actually was limiting the amount of light that your camera could possibly gather. And back in the film days, yeah, ISO did seem to cause high noise. And maybe that's why we still use that misconstruct today. But nowadays, if you are in a low light environment, just use a high ISO. That's the best you can do unless you can add light in some other way. I hope you found this helpful. If you wanna learn more about photography, especially camera settings, check out chapter four of my video book, Stunning Digital Photography. 
it's a better way to learn than just meandering from one catchy thumbnail on YouTube to another because it's actually a structured curriculum. You will learn things in a useful order from beginning to very, very advanced and technical content. And it's $9.99. Actually, we have a Mother's Day sale going on right now. The coupon code MOM will get you 25% off. So it'll be like $7.49 or something. So head to northrop.photo to check it out. And in the comments down below, I'd like to hear your tips for working in low light, high ISO environments. Thanks.